Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we are going to discuss what I believe is one of the most quintessential survival skills that all of you, especially the gun-toting meatheads out there, absolutely need to learn and master. So I brought on an expert. She's a soil scientist. Her name is Ashley. She's from the Gardening in Canada YouTube channel. So what we're gonna do today, you've seen the last videos that we did in this series. This is the third video in the series. Go check out the first two videos. We're gonna take the plants that we got from Dutch growers. We're gonna transplant them into larger pots in our indoor studio that we're gonna supplement with artificial lighting. But before we do that, we have to close the zombie shutters just to create better lighting so that you can actually see us in this video. All right, guys, let's get to it. All right, so what is our first step in transplanting this stuff into our indoor garden? Bucket prep. So we do, <laughs> we need to put in a little bit of work here. Um, we need to put holes in the bottom. I know you're wanting to keep the floor clean and stuff, but I don't trust that you won't overwater. So right. she we are does not do trust it. me. To not at all. So we're going to put some holes in the bottom of the bucket. Now okay. the size of drill bit you chose is adequate. Um, you go smaller, you want obviously more holes. You go bigger, you want fewer holes. But if you do go larger than say something of that size, you'd want to put like a coffee filter and something in the bottom just to prevent against soil loss because obviously in a prepper situation or just in a, even a financial collapse situation, soil is money. So we right. don't want to be just willy-nilly wasting that. But yeah, so that's a good size. And we're going to do three. We'll okay. start with that and then we'll see what Nate's watering personality is. Okay, so we'll just drill a few holes. Doesn't really matter where they are, hey? No. Okay. Drill, baby, drill. So right. for a bucket like this, when we have bridges in the bottoms, these ones you would want to put the holes on the lowest part of the bucket. If you put it up here, you'll have water pooling in these areas, which can turn anaerobic and can rot the roots. So you would just want to drill in those. All right. You got the fancy words, so take your word for it. So we have three sides of buckets. You have the seven gallon, the five gallon, and then we have the 13 liter. Now, in an ideal world, these would all be food safe, but it's okay, you're not gonna die. We'll be okay. So when we're looking at size and shape, something like that is going to house a tomato, a pepper, um, squash, zucchini very well because we have a large portion of soil and the roots on those are tap roots, so they're gonna go down and drill for water. Mm. Same with this one here, five gallon, obviously a little bit smaller, so you can expect to water semi more frequently. You said tap root is the ones that go, grow down. What is the opposite of tap root? Fibrous. Fibrous, so those are the ones that grow laterally. Yeah, and kind of look like a little bit of a mushroom on the end. It's like, it's all little fibers. A lot of grasses, corn, things like that are considered fibrous root systems. Okay, so we're gonna put a few more holes in this. So here's all the plants we're going. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different species. Everything from tomatoes to beans to cucumbers to squash to potatoes to jalapenos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything I miss? You have more than ten species. Okay. You have ten types of plants. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I'm in grade school ever since she came back. So first off, we're gonna start by soaking our larger size seeds. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna help with the germination process. So, bit of science here for you. Seeds have belly buttons on them, and the belly buttons allow for water to go in. When we soak them, it allows for the water just to penetrate a little bit quicker. So sometimes what ends up happening, especially when we're using the lukewarm water that we're using right now, it tends to expedite the process of germination. And how long would soak. that take? That's just like a few minute process? or? Um, so we're gonna plant pretty much everything else and then come back to the seeds. Okay. So we're talking probably about an hour. If someone's doing like a seed saving project and they have aged seeds or they're not sure or confident in their seed saving process, soaking them can actually help the germination process, um, especially if we're dealing with older seeds that we're not sure of. So anyone who has a survival kit that they maybe haven't used, seeds dry out over time in order to help them hydrate a little bit quicker, we can use some water to do so. So whenever we're doing seeds, we are over estimating what we need. So the general rule with any good quality company is 80% germination rate. 
So you have to keep that in mind when you're both purchasing seeds for a survival kit and saving seeds in a survival situation. Another misconception is that floating seeds mean that they're not viable. That's not true. These are all viable. It's just the bubbles getting caught underneath the seed that's causing them to float and they will sink. Okay, okay so I don't know if I brought enough soil, but we're about to find out. Look at that, that's a sharp knife right there, isn't it? First time it's ever been used. You know, I spent last night sharpening my knife for a few hours because I knew that you were coming. And I thought I could impress her with a sharp knife, but backfire. I just think it's unused. <laughs> So actually Nate's doing a really good thing right now. That's He's uh, breaking up the chunk. Of course. What we're gonna do is break up all of the chunks like what Nate's doing right now. Wrecking his manicure. So this is your tomato plant. Um, now, there's a few things that we can do to prep this. First off, when we pull it out of the actual container, you want to give the roots just like a gentle little squeeze. Otherwise, our roots can tend to go around in a circle. We want to avoid that. We want them to fill up the actual bucket itself. Transplant shock is very common. We'll end up with wilting and kind of like limp looking plants. To avoid that, we can use phosphate fertilizers, which will help reduce shock. Plants use that kind of similar to how we use vitamin C when we're sick. Another thing we can do is harden them off over time. Or my favorite thing to do is actually to take a bucket and cut the bottoms off and then place that over top of the tomato for approximately a week or two and it will help adapt the plant to the outdoors without causing any damage. This is what the plant will look like and what we want to do is actually remove this bottom leaf here because it's in contact with the soil and it can cause disease. And then the other thing we're gonna remove are these runners. So if you see the main stem here and then you have these offshoots, we wanna remove the ones in between here. So we have another one here. We want to remove those indefinitely because we want the plant to focus on flowering. We don't want it to focus on foliage growth. People will sometimes plant uh, to a deeper depth. It's either to the first set of cotyledons, but we're not using starts here. And then we also, or it'd be to the first true leaf, but you can tell that the first true leaf, this has already been buried deep enough. So you could technically keep on going up the stem as far as you wanted, because this will uh, let out something called advantageous roots. These hairs here are called trichomes. Trichomes are what let release the smell. They also help prevent against drought, things like that. Whereas the advantageous roots are actually the kind of wart looking things that you can see on the stems sometimes. And they look like pimples almost, and that's where the roots would come from. And this whole stem will get them, and they come from the prichyrum cells. So in layman's terms, we can bury it about an inch above and still be all right? You can bury it to here and be all right. Okay. It all depends. The deeper you go, the better the plant is at regulating heat. So if you're planting into cold soil, mm -hmm. such as what we are here in Canada, you would want to lift it out of the soil a little bit. You won't want to go for extreme depth. But if you are planting this in Florida or California, mm -hmm. we want to go for depth. So you just throw that on there. You don't go around and make sure it's like tucked in or anything? No, I push. Okay. So, and you're good. So in a <laughs> situation, actually, okay. you right. can benefit from these cuttings that we ripped off. Yeah. So these can root and turn into other pepper plants. So if you want to- Tomato plants. Wow. You got that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually ding, ding, put ding. these into water. So we'll actually mm -hmm. use those cups and we'll place the cuttings in there and these will root and they will turn into baby plants. So in this soil, we got, what is this, vermiculite? That's perlite. Perlite. And if you want to get technical, it increases soil porosity. All right, so for these ones too, we just give it a little squeeze. A little squish. A little tussle. Six pack, you see, hey? I can only fit so much in this brain of mine. And half of it's about Russia right now. Half of it's about what Putin's doing in his bunker. So six strawberries will fit in a 13 liter Rubbermaid tub. Strawberries are pretty good at putting in really tight spaces. Okay, so when it comes to potatoes, 
we don't have to plant all of them, but they're gonna go, they're gonna spoil. Um, so I actually would only do one potato per container. So okay. you have a ton here. And the taller the container, the better. Now, if this Why is that? Because they grow down or what is that? Yeah, so we're gonna plant these ones entirely different than we planted anything else. Mm -hmm. So with these guys here, we're looking for eyes. Now you wanna go for about three eyes per cutting, and this will maximize your yield. So you can see I've got one, two, three, and then I have one, two, three, four. So a good cut on this one would be right here. And this now just gave me two plants. Same thing with this one. You see one, two, three, four, but that doesn't have any more on there. So that would be on its own. Okay. And then this one has more than three and we could cut it in half, but there's not much energy left in this and it's so tiny. So we would leave this one alone. When you're gonna like actually use seed potatoes, should you always go for the bigger? Is bigger better or like, is this gonna grow just as good as this? Yeah, it doesn't matter too much because we do cut it. But keep in mind like this one, there isn't a ton of energy here. So if you plant it in cooler soil, you're not gonna have as much. Um, if it right. takes longer to like sprout, you're not gonna have as much. So you're putting a lot of stake in this. So this is like the, the packet of like fertilizer in the, in the thing. Exactly, yeah. Right. So for this one, I'm actually gonna get you to put just a small layer on the bottom. Yes. Okay, so that's all I'm putting in the bottom. It's going now, do, are we putting these ear, uh, eyes up, eyes down, ears so up, ears down? So some people have theories on this. That's my theory. Really? Yeah. They all, they all grow. Okay. They all produce food. And now we're going to do a, another layer on top, just a tiny little bit. We're only going to fill the bucket about halfway. So now with this guy, what we're gonna do is we're going to leave him in here, treat him, water him until we see a little sprout. And the moment we see green pop up, we're going to put more soil on top. And then once we see green again, we're gonna put more soil on top. And we're just gonna keep going until the plant is flush mm. with the top of the bucket. And then what's going to happen, very similar to what the tomato did with the advantageous roots, yeah. it's going to do the exact same thing, but the roots are going to be our meal. Mm. So, so you're going to get a bigger yield. Yeah, way bigger. Okay guys, so you remember we did the pepper spray video where we made pepper spray out of Carolina Reapers and I talked in that video about how you can grow your own. Well, we're going to do just that. We are going to weaponize the garden today. Okay, so how do we grow this uh, Carolina Reaper pro. Deadly plants. So what you want to do here is depending on the situation. So because we're in an indoor environment, I want to make these into little baby bush slash trees eventually. So we're going to actually top these to cause a branching and a Ying. Once we get the Y, we're going to top the two Ys, which is going to cause another set of branches, another set of branches, and it's going to make a bush. Okay. But if we wanted an earlier harvest, a quicker harvest, we would not top. So you would leave it as a singular stem and then it would yield fruits faster. The issue is it's not obviously going to make a bigger veggie. So we can top some, not top others, but ultimately the goal because we're indoors is to have a continual supply of those in large quantities. And what do you mean by top? Just for people who don't know what that is. Okay. So now what we just did is we removed where all the oxen was fo uh, focused. So it's the type of hormone in the plant that's mm -hmm. focusing all the growth into this area. Once we remove that, we remove the directive and now the plant's confused. So it's going to give the directive all to these nodes here. So it's going to branch out. Mm. So instead of it going like this, it's going to go like this. Mm. So it's going to give us more yield. It's more all about yield. yield. Yeah. So this, plant is this going to be a perennial plant or how does this one for work? you in this situation it's going to be a perennial plant okay. people in hot environments like warm climates in the u.s can also be a perennial plant and for people in cold climates as well mm -hmm. you can technically overwinter these indoors if you have grow lights okay. so anyone who grows peppers of any nature it could be a bell pepper it could be something like this jalapeno whatever the case is yeah. you can bring it indoors 
and put it under a grow light and you will have a pepper every single year. Okay. It'll yield more peppers every year because the plant's just gonna get bigger and bigger. So we're gonna throw it in one of these? Yeah, so we don't need as big of a bucket. This can be actually this plant's home <coughs> for quite a while. This is just for this one guy here? Yeah, we're just gonna do the one. Woo, that one's funky. When it <laughs> smells like that, so when you smell like it smells like swamp, yeah. That's exactly what it smells like. So it means that there's no, there's low oxygen presence in here. And so we have a buildup of anaerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria is what causes root rot and root rot will take out your plant. Mm. So soil, when it's fully saturated with water, pushes out all of the air. And so there's no room for oxygen. So we want to balance. We never want fully saturated soil because okay. we want a mix of oxygen, water and nutrients. But in this situation, when you get that whiff, that's a sign that it's only water, no oxygen. So we let this out to dry for a few days. Yep, yeah, and then, then it's good again. Then it's good. Yeah. Okay. Just think, someday I might spray myself with this guy. That'd be a full circle kind of thing, hey? Two million Scottsville units. Scoville. Scoville. <laughs> Call me talk. You and your fancy words. This one, again, you could plant deeper if you wanted to, but we don't have to because we don't have to battle the heat here. So we're just gonna place them on top. Um, there's a couple different options for onion plants. One is what we call sets and the other one is called bulbs. So when it comes to onion sets, they tend to yield smaller sized onions. So what's happening there is onions are biannuals. The first year they make a bulb, the second year they make a flower. And so the ones that you buy that look like little mini onions in the store mm -hmm. are plants that were started from seed, planted and around like July, allowed to grow for about six months, harvested and then put into the supermarket for you to purchase and then plant. So you're, they're actually disrupting the plant's life cycle midway through. So yeah, all you do is separate them. Okay. Now we fill this with soil. So we've separated all our onions. Mm -hmm. You're gonna hear pops and like rips when you do it. You're gonna yeah. feel it in the onion. Don't worry about it, they're fine. Okay. Onions don't like to be buried very deep. Is we're just going to place these roots in, just gently on the surface and prop them up. And then something that people like to do isn't necessary all the time, but just give the tops a little clip. And Whoa. then this will uh, just help it so it's not as floppy. There's not much science to, to suggest that this is, you know, helping with bulb formation or anything like that, but it's something that people do. But because these don't grow down very much, we actually don't need much soil for these guys. All right. So technically this is soilless that we're doing. Yeah. Um, but if you're planting in soil, just to help with better bulb formation, you always, you always want to make sure you're spooning and like getting rid of like the excess compaction around the actual plant. So you really superficially plant these. You've got a pepper on there already. Yeah, so this is why I actually picked this one. Um, so if you have a plant that has um, flowers already forming on it and yeah. you're going to plant it outside, you may want to consider removing the flowers to reduce that transplant shock we were talking about. So the shock of being put in a new environment, the mm -hmm. plant is focusing on reproduction right now and we would want it to think about root development and supporting the foliage. So we would remove fruits if they exist and we would remove the flowers if they exist. But because we're again in a climate controlled area, yeah. we can leave everything in place because really nothing's changing for this plant. So we're gonna leave everything on this guy. All I'm going to take off are these bottom leaves. I always get concerned when leaves are touching the soil and then we can plant him in, so. Why didn't you stop me when we were there? What? From buying all these plants. You could have stopped I literally me. said that. <laughs> I, I'm not, it's not just me, right? I have witnesses. Good job. Congratulations, you're, you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So now we are doing, and we're doing the seeds, right? Yeah. Beans. So we've been soaking these now for quite a while. Actually. All right. So we're taking our seeds that we've been soaking and they've all sunk, which is, that's how you know they're done. 
Yeah, because the starch is getting filled with water, so the starch is getting heavier. Okay. And so the air is being forced out of the seed. Water's going into the seed. So these guys, um, there's instructions on how to deep to put them, but mm -hmm. it's, about a, it's an inch anyways. Fun fact about the beans, though, is when they do start flowering, we would have to harvest until we get all the greens we want, and then we will let the remainder go to seed. If you allow them to go to seed on their first round, they'll stop producing food for you. Mm -hmm. So you wanna continually harvest from them. Okay. So these ones are bush beans, they're not pole beans. So these actually are not huge plants, mm -hmm. but we are pretty densely planting this. Okay. We forgot to uh, label the zucchini and the spaghetti squash. So what do you think we're putting in here? I think we're putting spaghetti squash. Okay, so we're gonna take three spaghetti squash seeds and we're going to take the best one. I'm gonna plant three seeds, but we're only gonna keep the strongest of the three. So we'll, if they all germinate, we're just going to destroy two. Yes, assuming it's spaghetti squash <laughs> and not zucchini. I, regardless, we yeah. were only taking one of the three, so. Either way, same family, relatively similar yield, would you say? Oh God, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the only thing is with the spaghetti squash, you would can or freeze it, whereas the zucchini you can make like the flour out of, right? And okay, so we got our zucchini. Zucchini and green. All right, guys, if there's one thing I learned today that I have a lot of learning left to do because this right here is the real deal. She's a wealth of information and as much as she needs to work on her jokes and her delivery, um, way better still, than you. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. I, I was gonna give you a compliment, now I'm not. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, guys, uh, go and subscribe to Gardening in Canada's YouTube channel. Just an incredible wealth of information. And uh, I learned so much today that could potentially, you know, keep me alive when it all goes down, even though I'm going to her house. So thank you very much for coming and educating me and <laughs> making me feel like an idiot. Much obliged. That's not true, I'm a very nice person. I know she is. Go subscribe to her channel, guys, trust me. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching, Canadian Prepper O. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.